vine-covered hills near Palestine is one of the best-kept secrets in East Texas. The Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility is a renowned balloon launch site involved in world-class scientific research. KLTV7's Joan Hallmark fills us in in tonight's Proud of East Texas. This massive 100,000-pound machine, nicknamed Tiny Tim, is a launch vehicle that can launch balloons as big as the Houston Astrodome. Crew chief Victor Davison, an East Texas native, is one of only three people in the entire world who has the expertise to launch these balloons. Now, this is the original. Who built it? Um, R.G. Letourneau out of Longview, Texas. Right here in East Texas. The data that we get, uh, the scientists get, rather, uh, is, is used all around the globe. Davison has worked here at the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility 24 years. He was right out of the Air Force looking for a job when he heard about the facility. I remember one of the things they told me uh, in my exit briefing was to make sure I went up. Uh, don't, don't go backward. And so when I saw this job in advertising the paper, it said National Scientific Balloon Facility, and I thought that was upward. And it has been upward. Originally established in Boulder, Colorado in 1961, the National Scientific Balloon Facility was moved to Palestine in 1963. It has recently been renamed the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility in honor of the Columbia crew and is under the sponsorship of NASA. When I first came to work here, it was uh, we were launching a lot of small balloons, uh, 11 million cubic foot balloons and 4 million cubic foot balloons. But as we as time progressed, we got to launching the bigger, bigger, heavier balloons that lift uh, 8,000 pounds. Now, Palestine is a staging area for balloon launches throughout the world, including Antarctica. A number of the facility's balloons are launched each year from that icy land with its 15 plus to 20 below temperatures. Ironically, it was Antarctica that first drew Tyler Wright Chris Field to his job as a payload engineer in satellite communications. What got my attention was it said you must be able to pass the exam to go to Antarctica. And I thought that sounded really neat, so I decided to apply for this job, and they ended up hiring me. Palestine is also the control center for launches at various other world sites, including Sweden, Australia, Canada, and India. We control the payload from here. We do all the commanding from here, and uh, we get all the data from here and pass that on to the scientists. The balloons, made of material as thin as trash bags but bigger than football fields, are inflated with helium and launched on journeys to the edge of space. The data gathering and scientific experiments they carry out can be accomplished at a fraction of the cost of rockets and space shuttle launches. A lot of people think that uh, what we do has to do with uh, forecasting the weather. Weather forecasting, it's not although weather monitoring for launches is part of the job. But what about sorting out the Big Bang Theory, detecting cosmic rays, measuring ozone layers, and hundreds of other scientific experiments that most of us don't understand? But what is accomplished by the Columbia Scientific Balloon Facility may well affect our lives and those of our children as long as this planet spins.
I'm with a group of brownies trying to spot satellites in the early evening sky. Now we don't just look this way, we've got to look all across the sky, we've got to try and take it all in. I can see the moon, but I can see two of them. <laughs> <laughs> On average, two satellites pass over Britain every quarter of an hour. But they're not the easiest things to see. Now, what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for something that looks a bit like an aeroplane, but it's not going to flash, and it's going to move slowly across the sky. Tonight, my team of brownies is in for a treat. Because the biggest satellite of them all is due to pass directly over Hatfield. It's the International Space Station, the largest thing human beings have ever put into orbit. It took more than 12 years and 30 trips to build, and it circles the Earth nearly 16 times a day. 
everyone, including the astronomers with their telescopes, is waiting for it to appear over the horizon. Whoa, I can see a star moving really, really quickly. Oh, uh, no, see, I don't think that's a star moving, that's a yeah, space okay. station. I didn't I say it. That is the International Space Station. There's a crude rule of thumb. If a satellite orbits 300 kilometres up, it needs to be just one square metre for us to see it with the naked eye. Time there's double the gravity. Anyway, have a look at the end of this, and there's a strange motion to the Santa. Take a look at the way it moves. It kind of skips out of control, out of her control a couple of times. First it dips down and then up a little bit, and then at the end it goes up a little bit, and she kind of looks a bit embarrassed, like she's been caught putting her hands in the cookie jar. Oops, I hope you didn't see that. No, we didn't see, Katie. Just keep the beautiful smile on your face, and that'll distract us from the hoax. They supposedly urinate into these funnels. How do they keep it clean? How do they stop it from being encrusted with dried urine? You can't use water to clean it. You could, but you'd be wasting a precious resource, and then there'd be dirty urine-filled water floating around the cabin instead of ordinary water. So to summarise, they're living with their own excrement, their faeces and their urine. They build the International Space Station out of long, thin segments. There's all kinds of motions being translated to the International Space Station through these blue handles everywhere. They could spring a leak between segments easily. There's no airlock between segments. They don't do laundry or have showers and they're incredibly uncomfortable the whole time. They don't have access to proper medical treatment or facilities. They have to routinely go outside to fix equipment because they like to put stuff on the outside of the International Space Station that can only be fixed from the outside. So in short, this International Space Station is a suicidal hellhole. It's an awful place to visit. Every second their life is in danger and they could easily die, yet nothing ever goes wrong that they can't easily cope with and fix given the incredibly limited set of tools they must have up there. And they act like they don't care. The International Space Station is the worst place in the world to be, and yet they act like it's the best place you could be. <laughs>